So uh, this year we're featuring a wide variety of work coming from all across the world. We have work from the BBC uh, focusing on the refugee crisis. We have work from uh, Russia focusing on, on Donetsk with uh, beautiful drone views. We also have produced uh, work from Rio de Janeiro in Brazil about the Zika virus epidemic and uh, the upcoming Olympics and we, we have uh, plenty of other features. We're showcasing a portfolio of projects of different types of um, 360 content and virtual reality content, um, ranging from fast turnaround um, reports, proper news gathering in 360, for example, um, a, a report that was done in Paris just after the terror attacks by Matthew Price um, that was shot on a consumer camera, which is really for watching on, on mobile and tablets. All studies have shown that users feel a lot more empathy with the subject and theme of the story. And also that being able to be part of the story and not simply watching it or witnessing it makes, it makes a huge difference as a viewer. A rather extraordinary, um, full, true VR piece using um, CGI, which which takes you to the heart of the story of the migrant crisis, where you meet a family of Syrian refugees on a beach in Turkey, about to make their second attempt to cross over to Greece, and you experience the, the terror of the, the sea crossing that they have to make, sitting on the boat, squashed up beside them. It's, it's, it's chilling to actually be there and realize the aftermath of uh, what happened uh, and, and, and what has happened and continues to happen. Um, I guess the, the, the thing I kept thinking is, what if I uh, have a little tear <laughs> and how am I going to wipe it? <laughs> how am I going to wipe my eye because my, my, I can't get my finger in there? Um, but it, you know, it really was, uh, it really does sort of bring that conflict to life and, and the impact of the conflict. 360 video makes a, a lot of sense for journalistic purposes. It's cheaper, it's easier to implement, and also it's more photorealistic, which usually matches the traditional journalistic approach. For the first time in the history of storytelling, we're putting our audience in the center of the story. So everything needs to change. We need to change the way how we tell stories. We need to change how we uh, think about producing content for VR because it's just different language. I mean, they're still fairly slow to, to pick up the technologies for two reasons. One were the high budgets with, which were associated, and also uh, post-production workflows which were difficult. But more and more, uh, you see journalists getting in touch with these technologies, learning how to use them, and there's no question about it, this is one of the futures for journalism and media. Now, now working out how to achieve that um, isn't always easy at the moment. We're still waiting for the, the technology to improve, whether that's the capture technology, the cameras, um, right through to the sort of um, technology that might enable people to experience these things at home. But it's starting to happen now, and it's good enough to get started. So it's an extraordinary time to experiment and find out what works. And that's what we started to do. I do think this kind of experiential storytelling is, is, is one of the futures for, for this industry, yeah. 